Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Team Training Tuesday. And I like to also call it Applied Neolife. Neolife is a health and wellness family. We are committed to learn what we can do to make the world a healthier and happier place. My name is Esses Anambasi. I'm trained as a medical doctor. However, I'm very, very passionate to see that we strive and succeed in becoming healthier and happier, all of us. So today I thought we'd go to the beginning, following last week's uh, discussion on mast cell activation syndromes. I thought this was a good topic to discuss next because I'm building a story of connecting narratives so that we see how fearfully and wonderfully we are created. So I want us to talk about factors that impact fertility. As usual, I like to approach topics from angles that are not commonly approached from. And um, I've subtitled it preparing for pregnancy and life and for life. Because until we appreciate that how one's health turns out in adulthood and or even during teenage years, maybe heavily impacted by the very beginning, which is at conception and even before conception, because the health of the parents is crucial. So that's why I want us to think, and I hope that it will be insightful. So that is a, a picture just to show, uh, an ovum that is about to be fertilized. And the amazing thing is only one sperm can fertilize an ovum. So as we talk about fertility, I want to just quickly cover what we mean by infertility. That is failure to conceive or inability to carry a pregnancy to term. That is the definition of that. And we just need to remember a few points. First of all, it can be difficult to pinpoint the exact cause. Then we need to also remember how we define it. It is the failure to conceive or to carry a pregnancy to term after more than two years of regular sexual activity during the time of ovulation. Okay, that is important, that the ovum has to be released and that's when uh, fertilization can happen. About 25% of couples estimated uh, in this um, narrative, between 20 and 30% of couples are affected and it can be a source of distress. And so we need to be very sensitive and compassionate and approach the topic with empathy. So because we are a health and wellness company and we have the most amazing range of nutrition, today I wanted to approach it from the point of view of nutrition and introduce the concept of anti-nutrients. Or if you want, you can call them the things that rob us of nutrients. And then later in the presentation, you will see how it is actually very, very important to be aware of these anti-nutrients. So optimum nutrition is about what you eat through your mouth and what you don't eat because you know your skin is very absorptive and your lungs also absorb, so you might be inhaling things and they form in the general sense part of your nutrition. But we know that since the 1950s, 
many man-made chemicals entered the food supply. Things like pesticides, things like antibiotics, hormones, plastic packaging. Plastic, plastic packaging and um, okay and then also we also know that nutrients as a result of those things tend to be stopped from being absorbed and used correctly by the body and also their excretion the excretion of nutrients is promoted so that's what we mean by anti-nutrients. So I thought I'd bring that concept up now. And let's give an example. I'm sure all of you have seen drinks and foods that are a yellow color. There's something called tartrazin. It's a synthetic yellow dye used to color those foods and beverages. And you might read labels. It is known by so many names, OK? So that is a, a trick that is used very often to change names so that people are not <laughs> aware of what is going on. Tartrazine is water soluble. It is used in drugs. It is used in cosmetics. It is used in foods and beverages. Now, it was banned in some countries because of its potential to cause allergy and anaphylaxis. In other words, it is a very potent um, activator of mast cells, the topic of um, a week ago. And tartrazine increases excretion of zinc through the urine, and this can lead to immunodeficiency because zinc is vital for the immune system and also to hyperactivity. And that's why we are seeing a lot of situations of children who have been diagnosed with attention deficit and hyperactivity. So I'm just laying this foundation so that we know what we are talking about. And then here's some more news about anti-nutrients. Uh, you might all remember in those days when we had things like DDT, which was an organochlorine, and ultimately they were banned in many parts of the world, but because of their residual effects, they stick around for a long time, okay? And now those have been replaced by organophosphates. Those are very, very common. That is what we are using today, but we know that they are cancer causing, they're linked with birth defects, they are also toxic to the brain and to uh, nerve tissue, that's what we mean by neurotoxic, and they lead to decreased fertility. So uh, those are anti-nutrients or organophosphates that are so commonly used. And then pesticides, when we get exposed to pesticides, they have been associated with a higher prevalence of depression, of aggression, and of memory decline and uh, other diseases such as Parkinson's disease. And of course, uh, following on to mast cell activation, um, they're linked with asthma, eczema, migraine, um, irritable bowel syndromes, sinusitis, rhinitis. So we're talking about a lot of the conditions we see commonly, and we don't often pause to look for the root cause. And this is the reason we like to do these sessions, to look for the root cause. So if there are any visitors invited to this presentation, you are most welcome. And please listen up and perhaps you might have some good ideas as to what we can do about this overwhelming situation. 
basically because it is difficult to test for multiple combinations of those anti-nutrients such as pesticides that we are all exposed to. We are all exposed. And also um, the aim should be to reduce exposure by getting the knowledge and therefore being able to choose carefully as often as you can. Having said that, it is a fact that optimum nutrition increases fertility. It also impacts the health of a pregnancy and the chances of a healthy baby with strong resilience to disease. In other words, the baby is born with a strong immune system. It's very unfortunate that that seems to be um, the case, that's no longer the case so much these days, but we can make a difference if we know what to do and if we are intentional. So I would like us to focus on strong foundations and it is a fact that research shows that if both partners are in good health and receive optimum levels of all the right nutrients, that is really an ideal situation, isn't it? The effects of age on their chances of conceiving and having a successful pregnancy can be reduced. In other words, if Part, uh, couples are intentional about really looking after their health and getting the right nutrients into themselves, plus all the other factors, then age shouldn't be um, a huge issue. And of course, I'm not talking about the biblical age where we hear about Abraham and Sarah who were in their hundreds and nineties, but yeah, something comparable, okay? People can conceive. And then I just want us to bring this conversation to the fore. It's a, something we should be having for the sake of future generations. Health is not a static state. It is a long and endless journey of learning and aspiring to live in the right environment. So that gives you the impression that you should actually encourage yourself and each other to start early on this journey, rather than waiting for all the health to be lost and then hoping that you will get it back somehow, okay? So we must be willing, having said all this, we must be willing to change beliefs and behavior patterns that are no longer serving us. And we must be willing to get back to the basics that worked. And in this particular family called the New Life family, we like to go down to the basics and I'll show you why. So back to strong foundations first, the healthy habits to increase fertility, one has to make sure that your, your diet is correct. Exercise, you get adequate sleep, you manage stress, and of course, good interpersonal relationships, because um, that is crucial. If a couple is fighting, there's no way they will become pregnant. So there's a lot of advice out there, you know, about what to eat and what not to eat and what to avoid, which is important. And we should heed that advice. But we are going to also zero in on what we have in the form of supplementation. Then of course, let us look very carefully at one of the factors that actually might be in the way of fertility. And that is imbalance in lifestyle, okay? So I love this wheel, you've seen it before, I'm sure. Um, but if somebody is so focused on financial and forgets everything else, the stress levels will, by, by every imagination, be uncontrolled if all they ever do is 
focus on money, 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 and then they'll forget about love and communication and connection with family, and they'll forget about how to have a vision and the spiritual aspect of it and um, their spiritual health. So this is so important, the balance. And this is what we call the wheel of life. We, I refer to it very often. So why is this important? Why this is important and indeed achievable is because you want to have consistent high levels of energy naturally, naturally, without using any stimulants, without using any drugs, you don't want all of that. You don't want it to be fake, you want it to be naturally acquired. And then you need to have emotional balance. One needs to have mental fitness, in other words, a, a sharp mind, so that when fertility is optimal and you are uh, getting the babies, mental fitness, is very helpful to raise those children, right? And then also the desire to, main, to maintain physical fitness is important and awareness of what enhances health, what suits your particular body and what you need is important. So all these factors feed into each other and let's just carry on. Here are some facts about preconception, that is what one needs to be aware of as regards fertility and preconception. Fact number one, which might surprise a lot of us, it takes about three months for sperm to mature. So now that is important to know because if the lifestyle within the three months is you know and not conducive to healthy sperm then low fertility happens or should fertility be such that conception takes place then the quality of the conceived individual might not be as optimal and as high as they might they could their potential Okay, on the other hand, it takes about a month for an ovum to mature. And so one has to be careful in those uh, time frames. But listen to this, one in three conceptions is actually spontaneously miscarried during the first three months. So that is an indication that it is incompatible with life. So it is not allowed to grow and it is lost. And the risk can be reduced when both the partners, the mother and the father, are adequately nourished and stress managed, just to emphasize that point. So here are some causes of low fertility. Okay, Common causes of miscarriage include lack of progesterone. Progesterone is a hormone in both men and women. And the unfortunate thing is it is the precursor, the, the, rather the unfortunate thing is the precursor to progesterone is cholesterol. And a lot of people are having their cholesterol levels um, interfered with either because of the poor diet or medication. But let me just leave it at that and carry on. Another cause of low fertility is accumulation of homocysteine. Homocysteine is um, the product of metabolism of amino acids, such as the main one, methionine, okay, and other amino acids. So homocysteine buildup can be an indication of a form of malnutrition that we will just look at when we look at the nutrients required. So this can lead to damage to arteries and even to DNA. And so 
I want us to each look at how we can find out the homocysteine levels in ourselves. I'm actually going to uh, make a point of finding out whether I can have that particular test and see whether I fall in the right category. But it should be an important test. A lot of um, labs and we've been conditioned to think that as long as you know your blood sugar and your cholesterol, you're, you're good. No, homocysteine is actually a very important topic in all sorts of conditions. And also something that causes low fertility is excessive toxic metals in the environment. That's a topic we cover frequently, but it comes up again. And then also, of course, suboptimal nutrition. So it's a huge topic, but here are some questions. Here are some questions that I, I would like each of you to think upon. Do you take care to ensure that most of the food you eat is organic? Do you often eat fried foods? Because there are a lot of um, toxic chemicals that might interfere with fertility. Do you live in a city and drink unfiltered tap water? Yeah, that is a question you could be asking yourself. Perhaps do you smoke or live and work with smokers? Is most of the food you eat or drink in um, containers with plastic or it is wrapped with um, cling wrap, as we call it, because that also has a lot of hormone disrupting chemicals in there. Do you have alcohol on most days? And this is one that I want everybody to be very uh, thoughtful about. Do you take, on average, one course of antibiotics each year? Because that is enough to damage your gut bacteria and disable a lot of hormone production, normal, normal hormone production, as well as vitamins that are required to ensure that fertility takes place, such as the B vitamins. So let's talk about diet and how important it is and the very fact that we have the responsibility to choose what our diet consists of. So this is a call to action to consider going back to uh, the basics and the diet that works. So for the guests, I just want to always bring in this particular series of slides just to remind us that we in this family know that we need to have minimal amounts of fats and sugars. We need to be doing physical activity and managing weight. And then whole grains, fruits and vegetables and protein are very, very important. But modern lifestyle and typically, Everything has been turned on its head where I, whereby people hardly manage their weight because they do very little physical activity. And we are eating way too much of the wrong fats and too much sugar. And then we don't get enough of the fresh raw fruits and vegetables as we should. And of course, whole grains are a thing of the past, but the good news is that we have solutions so as I carry on, the result of that typical lifestyle is that people quickly slip into this phase of being tired and sick. Now, a sick and tired person will find it very difficult to have optimal um, fertility. It is virtually impossible if one is sick and tired to also be fertile. Okay, so there's a lot of loss of life and there's a lot of living in the wrong zone. But the solution is to reintroduce whole grains so that our cells at a cellular level are healthy again. And we are about to show you 
exactly how that happens. We have a product that is foundational. And so I brought up this concept of strong foundation first. And that's what we are talking about. A strong foundation, even of the family, means that we need to have the right nutrients so that we can have the right fertility and bring forth the next generations. So that's what we are talking about, cellular nutrition. These are cells, they're called an ovum and sperm. How basic can we get? And in the human cell, we have what we call mitochondria and the cell, the nucleus has some DNA in it and the mitochondria also have a lot of DNA. So that is what we are talking about, protecting our heritage as human beings. So now let's talk about essential fatty acids, which is um, the classification of sterols. Uh, um, TNN uh, has lipids and sterols, and those form the foundation for all cells and hormones. And then we have omega-3 oil, which is important for prostate health, again, talking about fertility, and for modulating or balancing of hormones, ensuring that the immunity is functioning well, and for controlling inflammation, very, very important. So that basically is what we need to always remember. To prevent disease, we need to ensure weight management, adequate physical activity, and a diet which is rich in the right whole foods. And so I just want for the guests who don't know that we belong to this family, we are very, very privileged to have a scientific advisory board or the scientific advisory board, which was founded by a top scientist. He was a top psychologist and pharmacologist. He's left a good legacy, which we build our business and our nutrition on. But the ethic is human natural nutrition, always, always. Nothing gimmicky or fake or chemical. So this is our flagship. And as you can see in it is TNN. TNN is the firm foundation. And then we have the concept of core nutrition, which has all the amino acids and it has Provitality, which has TNN, it has Salmon Oil Plus. And the reason I bring this particular picture up is that we might be the one of the few companies that has absolute purity and completeness. We are very, very proud of our product. And this is important for the topic that we are discussing today, which is fertility. So it's news you can use for all men and women. And you've heard how due to anti-nutrients, a lot of people are losing zinc, but it's so important to know that before you supplement, if you want to save money and to remain wise, first remove the things that are zapping your nutrients, okay? And then you can, spend your money wisely and also have good lifestyle choices that impact fertility, such as avoiding the following. Vigorous exercise, hot baths and saunas, all those can change ovulation and reduce sperm. Stop or avoid the dependence on medications. As an example, also medications can cause low or no sperm production. Did you know that? And also smoking, we've talked about it, it's pretty obvious, and alcohol, it can cause low sperm count and prevent implantation of uh, a fertilized egg. And that might be one of the reasons that one in three conceptions end up in miscarriage in the first few weeks. And then caffeine for some women may be one of those anti-nutrients that may be leading to 
prevention of um, conception. So I'm now going to rush through. Let's talk vitamins. Uh, vitamin C, very, very, very important for sperm production. It keeps sperm from clumping, making clumps. It also improves the way the sperm move because remember they have to swim really fast to reach the ovum and one will win. Vitamin B complex is important for reproductive glands and sex hormone production. Now, we've talked about strength. It is helpful for combating stress. And then um, it is also needed for RNA and DNA, that is the genetic material for synthesis of those and it will restore fertility in some women. And beyond that, should the woman conceive and have her baby? One of the reasons that women cannot initiate and sustain breastfeeding is because of um, vitamin B deficiency. So that is something to remember. Ideally, we should be willing and able to breastfeed. Vitamin A is important for reproductive glands. Vitamin E balances hormones. It carries oxygen to all the organs. And vitamin D, which is a hormone-like vitamin, is important for immunity and cellular energy. Now, amino acids. And that's, you get all these things actually in the core nutrition, but then you can go targeted by adding extra. And that's what we have the privilege in, to have in this company. So let's talk about arginine, which increases uh, sperm count and plays a role in sperm motility. Glycine increases oxygen supply in the blood to all tissues, particularly the important tissues for fertility. And then I talked about methionine and cysteine. These are sulfur-containing amino acids, which are important because they are effective against free radicals. They work like uh, antioxidants, and they also protect hormonal function. But in the absence of ways to manage the metabolism of these um, amino acids, homocysteine builds up. So some people go over the top with their meat consumption, and that is a sure way of building up too much homocysteine, in the, particularly in the absence of the B vitamins to control it. And then tyrosine, it stabilizes mood and relieves stress. So can you see how intricately we are created and how all these things come together for a, a purpose? to ensure fertility. Now, I discovered that amitone, which has a free form amino acids, has those ones that I've just rattled off. So it, it would be an important addition to couples to enhance fertility, particularly in the male um, of the couple, but I'm sure ultimately, I, I, I prefer to get my amino acids as all 22 in the shakes, but this is a product that you can consider. It's an amino acid body toner and it's taken at, in the evening before bedtime. So the essential vitamins, I call them essential because the body has to be supplied with them. They're often very deficient and so that is why we have supplementation. And that's what we are introducing you to. So these are very important and you've heard how important they are for fertility. And then vitamin E that I have shown and talked about. Then minerals, let's just quickly go through those. Selenium deficiency would lead to low sperm count and infertility, zinc is so, so, so important for functioning of reproductive organs. It actually enables uh, sperm to be able to fertilize um, egg, the ovum. 
zinc deficiency is one of the reasons that that doesn't happen. And now you, you are getting the, the gist of it. Manganese, it maintains sex hormone production and um, it is found in a product that I'm about to show you. And of course, calcium and magnesium, very important for hormonal health and stress management. But now multi, and that's why we have it in pro vitality because in it is manganese, it's a trace mineral. It is also found, uh, manganese can also be found in the shake, okay? It helps to form connective tissue, bones, blood, clotting factors, and sex hormones. So that is something that is often deficient and people wonder why are we battling to conceive when it might be a manganese deficiency. And remember, I said that it is difficult to pinpoint one thing, okay? And we, we don't ever try to do that. Selenium deficiency is one of the causes of low fertility. And also, when you take multi, which is found in pro vitality, but it can be a standalone product, like all the products, it provides 100% of your daily requirements of manganese and about 72% of the daily requirement of selenium. Those are what we call trace minerals. Okay, so million dollar question. Stress, is it the missing piece of the puzzle? I believe so, because you know it is the stress lifestyle that we lead these days that has caused a lot of problems. So here are some good practices. Avoid highly processed foods and particularly sugar and avoid excessive use of animal uh, fats. Now, we often touch on the topic of gluten, particularly wheat gluten and its uh, propensity to cause autoimmune diseases. Low fertility or infertility can be associated with autoimmune conditions. So that is just a tip. And then stress management, please uh, find what is suitable for you. Consult if you need some progesterone supplementation. We have it available in, um, as a bioidentical progesterone in feminine herbal. And then we have phytonutrients and we have so much that due to the time factor, I'm just showing you the pictures, but we have a lot to help with um, managing health. We call them adaptogens and uh, balancing hormones and a lot of nutrients as well. Now, finally, last week, I mentioned the formation of immune complexes and described it as litter in our bodies. It is so important to detox regularly. I can't overemphasize it. I really cannot. And you know, if you have people you know that might be battling, after you've introduced the core nutrition or at least at least the near life, the tree and then, then as soon as practicable, get them to experience a detox and then encourage them to detox regularly. And finally, this is my last slide, I hope. I want to, to say that charity really does begin at home. If after all that we have said, you are continuing to bring in toxins into your house, then my humble submission is that you will battle with fertility. And so start right here. Our products, our cleaning range is powerful. It is economical. It is earth friendly and it is person friendly in that it does not disrupt hormones. And remember, fertility is all about hormones. So thank you very much. I'm going to 
stop the recording and invite you to a discussion for a few minutes.